I just wanted to make a quick video um, update. It has been, I guess it's almost been two weeks since my oral exam. Um, I was going to make a video sooner, but there was issues with my car, and so my husband had to get one of our cars to the shop, and I just haven't really had time to like sit down and quickly do a video um, for you guys. So uh, I just wanted to take this video to just talk about how it went, um, how I feel about it, how I felt about it the day of, um, and how I feel about it now. So because of COVID, um, my exam was scheduled for eight in the morning. Um, I had a room um, planned, so most of my committee is on campus. Um, but with COVID and everything, it was just my advisor and I in one conference room, um, and everyone else was on Zoom. So we had my laptop there, and so that way like, we can move it closer to the whiteboard um, if needed. Um, and yeah, I mean, the way that it's set up, and I, I don't know if every oral exam is set up this way, um, but it was consistent um, with multiple people who were in my lab. So um, the way it usually happens is you go in, um, say hi to everyone, everyone shows up, and then um, they make you leave the room, and then they talk about your written exams um, for a little while. Um, they were talking about my written exams for about 30 minutes before calling me back in. Um, and so I was just kind of chilling in the hallway. Um, I did hear them say my name, so I like walked down the hall a little bit um, just to make sure that I wasn't like hearing what they were gonna say because I feel like it would have made me more nervous. So um, they were planning on what they were gonna ask in the order uh, in which each committee member asks questions. So they all took turns asking me a set of questions and that they had prepared or that they were interested in asking and you know that probably before I came in if they had overlapping questions they probably ordered it that way I'm not a hundred percent sure um, but I started with my first two committee members um, and the first two were actually pretty fun um, I had already talked to them before the meeting, so I had a good idea of what they were going to ask and what they expected of me. So they didn't actually ask me questions for a super long time. It felt so quick with those two committee members. It was like, bam, bam, bam. All right, well, you, you know the questions I was gonna ask you, so I'm done, who wants to go next? And then I would just move on. Um, so it, it was kind of interesting. Um, but then I went to my third committee member um, who, like, we had talked about it, he wasn't gonna give me feedback, I was to look through my exam, and, um, basically grade it myself, um, oh, that was the hardest one, um, mentally, the questions were really difficult, but I think it got to a point where it's like, yeah, you're not wrong, but that's not what I'm looking for, you're, and he kept saying, you're barking up the wrong tree, um, and I felt like he said that for every answer. I was like, I'm, I'm sniffing every tree in the forest here. Um, I knew I was doing really, really bad with his questions. And it made me feel so horrible because um, that was probably one of the committee members that I work closest with. So I, I felt pretty bad. I mean, I, I work closely with all my committee members, but I just feel like I've talk to him more frequently because our offices are so close. Um, so I, I felt absolutely horrible. I wanted to vomit halfway through his questions. Um, and I almost asked for a break, but I knew if I asked for a break, then, um, it would kind of show how nervous and how scared I was. But at that point I was like, it could go either way. They could say, I'm going to pass or I'm gonna fail just because the way I was answering those questions. And to me, how I answered the questions before that didn't even matter at that point um, because I was doing so, so bad. And like I said, it's not like I was getting, I don't know if I wasn't getting the questions wrong or if I just wasn't hitting the right depth or I wasn't understanding what he was asking for so it was uh frustrating and it was like so I'm in an ento department and 
he was trying to get me to talk about different um, like ecosystem services that insects do and what are the most common ones. So I studied decomp and I know that's not a common one. I was like, oh, I kept getting hung up on it. I just couldn't get past it in my mind. So I was like, pollination, that's easy. And then I sat and he was like, we, it took like five minutes to get out biocontrol. It was insane. It got to the end of his questions and I don't even know if he said this or if I was so stressed at this point that I'm remembering that he said this or that um, maybe he did, I don't know. Um, but it, at least it felt like to me, he was like, all right, I can't get anything out of her. So I'm done, who wants to ask the next question? Um, so it was really sad. <laughs> so the last exam that I, or the worst exam that I took was the last committee member to ask me questions. Um, and I wonder if it's because they knew I had felt that way. I had told my advisor, and I told a couple committee members that, you know, like this exam, I felt like I did pretty bad on. Um, so I have some improvement to do. Um, so we had just talked. It, it was a lot more relaxing than I expected. It wasn't like super crazy. Um, I, I didn't feel like I was fumbling too bad. Um, and it felt a little bit less stressful than uh, the previous questions that I was just being asked. Um, so I don't even know if in the blur of what was going on like I was at such a high stress level just before it that it didn't seem as bad um and then my very last questions were by my advisor um which was more of a conversation and it had nothing to do with my exam so I was just kind of talking to him it was I think it was more opinion I don't know it was a lot about forensic science and like ethics and writing papers and things like that so it wasn't like what is this what is that it was more like what do you think let's talk um so it, it wasn't that wasn't too bad but then at the end of the questions they have you leave the room and so I had gone in the hall I think it was about 10 or 20 minutes that I was out in the hall it was definitely shorter than before the questions started um and then they brought me back in so I'm sitting next to my advisor, looking literally like Casper um, next to him. And I, I felt like I was gonna vomit and they're just talking. Like they're just talking about normal things. I can't even remember what they were talking about at this point. It was like a continuation of their conversation about their opinions about one of the questions I was asked. So I was listening, I think it was something with, it was publication stuff. Um, but, that's why I, it's like I can't pick out what was in the exam and what was after at this point. Um, but I was sitting there, ghost white, and I swear it felt like they were talking for an additional 20 minutes. I know they weren't, but it felt like it. Um, so that was, it was long. And then my advisor just looks at me and goes, congratulations, you pass. And I just started like my lips quiver when I'm about to cry. So I was like, and then... Um, <laughs> So he looked like super sad too. He was like, um, but I, I didn't cry. I just like welled up. I was overwhelmed at that point and I wanted to be done. Um, but it, it didn't even feel like I passed. Like I thought it would be like a relief, but it wasn't. It was just more stress. And, um, we talked about how, um, I might be staying another semester, um, which bothered me a lot just because I'm trying to get home so like my husband doesn't have to stay away from our family and my daughter doesn't have to stay away from her family and it, it makes me sad that my family has to um, sacrifice for my own degree um, so that's something that I've been dealing with um, so I'll be here an extra semester they they were saying like you, you know a lot right like I, I know a lot but the depth isn't quite there yet. And they think that an additional semester or a year, if I could, um, would really make me a good candidate for postdoc positions and eventually um, an R1 research institution. And I really love and respect my committee. So I took it seriously. And that's why I, I am staying that extra semester now, um, despite not technically wanting to but um, I also think everything happens for a reason 
So I'm, I'm putting my faith in my committee. And I, I think I'm really lucky because I see all these people always talk about um, how they don't appreciate their, not don't appreciate their committee. They don't like their committee. It's not like the people on their committee aren't their style. Um, but I think I have an absolutely amazing committee that has really pushed me and made me this really broad research scientist instead of very specific. I think it's really easy to fall within your category and stay there, um, but my committee's pushed me out of my um, comfort zone multiple times, and I, and I do appreciate that. So after the exam, I think I cried on and off for about five days. Mm -hmm. I think I wasn't feeling normal again for over a week. Um, I, don't st I still don't even feel normal. I don't know what normal feels like anymore. It's very weird. Um, I still don't feel like I passed, even though I did. It's just like you get this general sense of insecurity because they basically picked out everything I don't know. Um, so it, it is something that I think that's why people do call it hazing is because the way you feel after. Um, but I am kind of this person who I, I just try to trust the process and accept it for what it is. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, so, I don't know. Overall, it went decently well. I feel, felt horrible after it. So now, classes started right after. So that, that's what I mean. Like, uh, I had to fix my car um, and all this other stuff was going on because classes were starting with COVID and I'm TAing two classes that are face-to-face. -face, so I've been dealing with that but um I still have to make the COVID video so I'm hoping to do that I really need to find time to do that one um so that way I can get my thoughts out on like I guess not paper but video um between the start of COVID and now and all of that stuff I think uh, a lot of the questions were disease ecology related because a lot of my work is related to disease ecology and since we're in a pandemic um it inspired a lot of questions about how um, blowflies transmit disease and how they can mitigate these things. So that's um, all I really had to say. Um, I'm sure I can go on for hours, but I don't want to make this video too long. Um, so thank you for watching this video, um, and I'll see you next time.